We are here to discuss sports, and we are going to start off today by talking about the Big 12 voting on, well, it's Friday show, Friday, to go ahead and accept BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF. I guess my my initial thought here is the AAC is now down to eight teams, and Mike Oresco came out on Wednesday and said, even if they lose those three teams, Cincinnati, UCF, and Houston, they are still considering themselves a P6 team, a Power 6 team, or a Power 6 league. They are going to go out and look for expansion candidates. And now I'm curious, who are the expansion candidates? I've got a few written down, but Chris, just off the top of your head, if you had to bring in four more to bring your league up to 12 members, what would you, who, who would you bring in? Well, I, I, first thing I think that this is what needs to happen with the whole group of high five. Okay, they need to come together as a collection and understand we're going to split this table up, and we're going to have one grown-up table, and then we're going to have two or three lesser tables. But if we try to have a couple of good teams in all these conferences, we're going to be first and dust. So, I I believe that either the American or just they, they dog them all and start something fresh. If the American was to go out and get four teams, I don't care about region anymore. We can all hop a charter flight. These all guys are flying private. Doesn't matter. I would go get Coastal. I would go get Louisiana. I'd go get Boise. And I'd go get uh, San Diego State. That would be the third one I'd get. And, and I think, I think those are, well, and the reason San Diego State is all of those schools outside of Boise are really competitive in basketball. And and the American does have a pretty good basketball program. I would go get. I'd want a school in California, one of one of those West Coast schools, rather it be Fresno, rather it be San Jose, rather it be San Diego, one of those schools. And I could be talked out of that into another school. Well, no, yeah, I said Coastal, right? Yeah, yeah, you said Coastal. Yeah. So so that would be what I would try to do. I, they're not a power conference team or a tall team. They're, they're just Memphis, Memphis, you know. And, and those schools that help them. Uh, maybe if they could convince Army to join, and so now you've got Army and Navy, maybe you get the Air Force also. I, I'll tell you, it's, it's going to be a complicated, awkward situation for a while. But the rest of these G5 schools, I think, are more valuable if they put everything together. I would love to see what sucked is, is I left out Southern Miss, I left out UAB. Like, I would love to see those schools get in as well. And That's, I think there are yeah. some lesser American conference teams. And I would just, that, this is why I don't know that if I was the American, I would just go get a team. I just wish all of the, all of the schools that want to put money into football and they want to actually care about being good at football, I want those schools to have a conference to themselves. That's what I'm trying to say. So the, the list of candidates that I have here, I've got Louisiana, Louisiana Tech, App State, Boise, San Diego State, FAU, UAB, Toledo, right? Because I don't know that Coastal has made a huge commitment to the football program, but last year was definitely a sign of improvement, right? Because up until last year, Coastal had not done anything. Like, they are still a relatively new FBS program. I I am curious about that for sure, but I just see where you're coming from. I So this was the, the next topic that I wanted to hit was – the G5 and what is what should they do to make sure that they take advantage of this situation and i kind of wonder if all of those G5 leagues if they shouldn't just completely disband and all of those remaining teams pile together and do their tv yeah. rights in one big like not a conference but just one big league where where they sell their rights together right because i think the well, two are those, worth more that way they are worth more that way those leagues, outside of the ones that are committed to football, if you're committed to spending money on football and being good at football, then I think those teams should play each other. Everybody else, I don't think you shouldn't you shouldn't be able to play football anymore. Absolutely, you should be able to play. And those games are good. And those games are fun. And here's a whole conference that we completely left out that you had Toledo in there is is the MAC. I didn't touch the MAC because I think the MAC is good. I think the MAC is happy the way they're constituted. And and I wouldn't break them up at all. Agreed. They, they got they got that ESPN deal. They've got the best G five deal in the business. 
Yeah, they don't make a ton of money, but they they do have, I mean, the regional rivalries, all that. They are the most regional conference. Their teams do not have to travel far to play each other. I do like that setup, and that's why I almost brought this up because and, and they get and they get those Wednesday night games on ESPN all the time. So their biggest game of the weekend, or is it Wednesday or Thursday night? It's a solo game where they have television to themselves. Yes, yes, a hundred percent. It's it's partly what I was bringing up is, you know, why in the world are Charlotte, App State, and ECU all in different conferences? Like, they are all yeah. in the same state. Like, Memphis and UAB are not in the same conference. Memphis should be playing Arkansas State, UAB, Southern Miss. Like, it, this this makes sense. But Arkansas State is in the Sun Belt, Memphis in the AAC, Southern Miss and UAB in Conference USA. Like, these are regional I mean, rivalries that would work. It works, but here's, here's my issue, though, is I don't think you get any better, and I don't think you get anywhere by doing that. What, I do think it's more valuable for the Memphises, the App States, the Boises, the Louisianas of the world to not care about region at all. They need to get 10, 12, or 14 schools that care about football that they think are more valuable because of football to join a conference together. And that's I think UAB is one of them. They just built them a new damn stadium worth $150-something million. Like, like I, I would go get the schools – that care about football and are on an even playing field and and let those teams play one another in a conference. And I wouldn't care about region at all. Outside of that, all the other schools left that don't get in that conference, I absolutely would make it all regional, 100% regional. I could – okay, I can understand that. I can, But that I can means certainly. tearing up every contract you got outside of the match. And, and I think they would be willing to do that if they were guaranteed that they would actually make a little bit more by being able to play, one, because you're saving money on travel anyway, uh, but two... Well, but there's I think, no, hang on now. The G5 or the big the big conference that I'm trying to put together? No, no, the, the G5. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so the, the, the regional rivalry well, ones. They're going to have an opportunity because if they play those Tuesday-Wednesday night games, A, you're going to get you're going to get more money and more, uh, like, advertisement of your school being front and center on ESPN than you could ever do not being on there, okay? True. And, and so once a year, all of those schools will eventually get uh, – because ESPN would love a Tuesday night game. They'd love a Wednesday night. They'd love inventory for those nights, okay? And so you put you put these guys on on those days. They get to themselves. They're not going to pay a lot. It's going to be a good deal for ESPN because they're not going to get paid a lot of money. The schools, it's going to be more than they can make anyway. And I think that's a great deal for all of them. The, the the schools that care about football don't care about the money. And when you get Memphis Boise, you're going to get a bigger – that's going to do a bigger TV number than Boise playing anybody else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, the, no that makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. I mean, it's, it's why you had Boise and UCF, and it did a, a fantastic number on Thursday of week one. Right, which by yeah. the way, I was going to talk about this, but uh, but I've got it marked off of our list. But a hey, TV ratings, way way up for college football right now, just way over twenty nineteen, like not even just twenty twenty, but also way bigger than twenty nineteen as well. Now we did have some fun fun matchups, but yeah, the G five stuff, I'm I am concerned because I they the AAC is not going to be able to pull in as much money as they did when they had Cincinnati, UCF, and Houston. I'm just nope. curious if it's enough to make them all go, all right, fellas, we all need to sit down and have a discussion, right? Yeah. So and, this is where you need a czar of football. This is where we need somebody who oversees this stuff to, to bring these families together, to bring the five families of the G5 together and say, this is what I know you're not happy. This is what we're going to do. Two of you are going to lose your jobs. Two of you are going to go away, okay? And three of you, are going to oversee much bigger conferences than you already have. And I think we can put together 14 schools that want to compete in football, okay? And and we will kind of start at the top with your Boise and your Mem- like your bigger schools and we'll and we'll start there and we'll kind of whittle this thing down all the way down to even the bottom of that team. If the Mac teams want to get in that, then we can tear them up as well and throw them in the sleep. That's fine, too. But there's just there's just no way to split this pie up five ways and have all of the good teams be separated across the country. Because if the MAC was willing to throw it away, 
You threw Buffalo and Ball State into that mix. I think you could put together a hell of a conference. I really do. Where every week you can put 14 teams together and every week you're going to have great matchups. Not good matchups. Great matchups. I, I do tend to agree on that. I do tend to agree. Now, the other question is, you know, they're talking about not doing the 12-team playoff, how, how it doesn't have the support that everybody thought that it did. If they don't do the 12-team playoff and the G5 does look at doing something like this where they should just all combine uh, or or have, like, one smaller league, et cetera, how, how real do you think a G5 playoff could be? Like, just go ahead and, and divide these things up and see what the G5 teams can get from selling their own playoff. Yeah, that would be the obvious choice. You know, that that's exactly what would happen. And, and probably should happen. I hope that doesn't happen, though. I do think we're going to get a 12-team a playoff. I think all of the talk about it going away is strictly political. Everybody is trying to make their move and, and get, you know, what they want out of the deal. There, there's no doubt that if you stay at 14, there's no room for Fox, there's no room for NBC, and both of those teams want a piece of it. And the only way they can get a piece of and they have too much influence over too many power players involved in college football to not have a say. Okay. All of the Pac-12, all of the Big Ten are all, and, and I guarantee you, whatever new deal the Big 12 gets, it will be with somebody not named ESPN. All right. And, and all of those schools are going to have too much of a say. So right now they're squashing the Big 12, uh, the, the 12 team playoff pretty easily. But, but I'm going to tell you, that's only until the contract's up. And then once the contract's up, it's going to be owned like Donkey Kong because those other TV markets, those other TV networks, sorry, they're going to want a piece of it. And they can't get a piece of a 14 playoff. True. True. Very true. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.